Hello everyone, we hope you're doing very well. Today we're in the F-16C and we're looking at using the radar and firing AMRAMs. So first we need to understand what AMRAMs are for this to make sense. They are a medium range air-to-air -air missile. Their range is between 4 and about 25 nautical miles depending on parameters of our ship and the target like speed, aspect and altitude. The AMRAM has its own onboard radar. It's what we call an active radar homing missile, otherwise known as a FOX-3. But generally speaking, the way that we fire this missile is we fire it with its radar cold. We then guide it near to the target with our own radar on our F-16 via a radio-based data link. Then at a preset distance, the missile goes active or pitbull, it's commonly known as. That's, at that point, it severs the radio link with our ship here it turns its own miniaturized radar on re-engages the target and attacks from there now the good thing about that is that once the missile has gone pitbull it doesn't need any guidance from the mothership's radar so at that point i can turn around and run away and that's the beauty of the fox 3 there are disadvantages obviously for instance that transition space between the data link on our aircraft to going pitbull is possible it could actually select a different target if there are targets close together and that's one of the reasons why you never fire a fox 3 type missile into a dogfight that has friendly coalitions on because you're just as likely to hit a friend even if you haven't aimed at that friend it's just part of the philosophy of fox 3. the other way that we can fire this missile is what we call a bore sighted method and that is we do not rely on our radar at all there is no data link from our radar to the missile instead we just fire the missile at our ball side area basically in front of us and it immediately goes active immediately goes pitbull and it just finds the nearest target it can in front of it that's where the word pitbull came from because you know a pitbull terrier just finds the nearest thing in front of it and bites it and that's exactly what this does it doesn't care what that thing is it does not iff targets the first thing we're going to discuss is the two different ways we've got of selecting and initializing this missile. Note today we've got a mixture of AMRAMs and Sidewinders. I should say as well as these missiles come in two flavours at the moment, a Bravo version and a Charlie version. Charlie has smaller fins, slightly longer range. Bravo has bigger fins, slightly better manoeuvrability. The method one, which is in our basic nav setup at the moment, is to ensure first of all our fire control radar is turned on of course and our master arm is turned on. So method one is to press air to air here. By doing that, we've automatically selected the SMS page on our right MFD. We can see here that we are in air-to-air -air mode. We can see here, if we jump over here, that we've got the wrong missile selected. It's by default selected the 9X, the Sidewinder. So we're going to need to change that. We're going to press that there. Oops. We've now got four times A 120C, four times AMRAM 120Cs that we've got equipped. Functionality here, if we want to go back to the inventory for the hard points, we can go there and we can click to come back. Here are the stations we've got them set on or fixed to. Station 1, Station 2, Station 8, Station 9. We can cycle through them. If for some reason we wanted to fire at just a certain station for load balancing or whatever, we can do that. We'll just go with Station 1 if we can get back there. Next, Slave or Bore. Slave means that the missile will slave to the radar like the first method we looked at with data link and then go pitbull at a later point bore means that it will ignore our onboard radar and will only use its own radar so slave will always be the default and the most common thing to use it's much more useful than the bore we can also use one of our hotest buttons to change that that is rdr cursor slash enable that's not working at the moment but that will be a thing so just bear that in mind in terms of hud you can see things of interest our master arm is on here we've got four times MRM medium range missiles selected other symbology will go through in a little while now we've got to look at the second way of selecting the missiles so first things first I need to put myself back to a nav mode so just normal nav mode there no weapon selected now the second way is if we press this guy here dogfight missile override so if we press that that has overridden any mode that we're in and has basically taken us through to the missile mode. It's automatically selected the four AMRAMs there and we can see pretty much the same stuff down here. We're in missile mode now rather than air to air mode. It's very similar otherwise and the other functions are going to do the same thing. So those are the ways that we can select and initialize the missiles ready for use. So next we need to look at the three different ways we've got of targeting and firing this missile 
at a hostile. Method one is using the CRM or BVR mode. That's generally long range, generally above 10 miles. Method two is ACM mode, generally within 10 miles. And method three is the foresight method without a radar lock. So first, CRM mode or BVR mode. We need to go and get our radar set up for this. We've got tutorial videos on CRM or BVR and ACM radar usage. So we're not going to go through it. We're just going to go and get it done. So I'm going to turn now and look for some targets, lock a target up, and we'll talk about the new symbology. While I'm searching for targets, we should go through some more controls. To select a target in CRM, we're going to double switch target management up there or a single for SAM mode. We can also use this to select our ACM mode to select soy center of interest for our MFD for our FCR we can use DMS down to fire the weapon push weapon release button any more buttons that we use I'll let you know on the fly so contacts on our CRM on our FRC sorry our FCR fire control radar so what we're going to do is move our move our cursor towards them I'm going to you can fire the missile on this type of lock. I'm just going to pause here. We can either fire this AMRAM on an SAM, a situational awareness mode lock, like we've got here, or we can go for what we call the full blooded STT. We're going to go for the full blooded STT in this case. Arm um, pause, TMS up again. Okay, that is now an STT. We're now going to move ourselves just a little bit closer and talk about our new symbology. We've got our target designated box here. This, des this basically frames the target and the target is in the middle there next is our weapon sensor diamond so we know where the sensor of this selected missile a station one is looking because it's looking where that diamond is going there and you can see because we have it in slave mode it slaved itself to the target there our target designator box wherever that target designator box goes within slewable limits the missile diamond will go as well so we know what the missile's thinking as usual that's our flight path marker that's where we're actually traveling interestingly if our target designator box here went outside of the hud which is very common we would have a line drawn from our gun sight cross or our bore sight cross here towards the direction of where that target is to help you recapture that guy in your heart it's very normal to do that this circle here is a dynamic circle and it's incredibly important that you learn this this is the ase circle it's something you'll find in all modern jets and all modern fourth gen jets ase allowable steering error now that couples with this guy here this is the ASC, but most people just call it the steering dot. So you're going to call this guy the steering dot. The name of the game is before you fire the missile to maneuver your aircraft so that the steering dot here is as close to the center as our ASE circle here as possible. And it's all about flight efficiency of the missile. You want to give your missile the best possible chance you can of hitting the target. And that means firing it at exactly the right angle almost certainly this guy is not going to be coming directly towards you which means you need to add lead and that lead could be a lot the missile the target could be there and you may need to aim all the way out here that would be a perfectly normal thing to happen so i am to maneuver so this is in the center of this and the best way of thinking about it is the efficiency that we give to our missile is directly proportional to the distance between the center of our asc circle and this dot here Another way of saying it, the closer this is to the center, the better the shot will be. So it's an important thing that you have to do. Note, the ASE circle can get a little confusing. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's massive. It depends on parameters, speeds, closure rates, altitudes, aspects, and so on. So it's important you identify which is the ASE circle and which is your steering dot. So that's aiming. Next is ranging. When we get a lock like this with our radar-guided missile, we have our dynamic launch zone. I'm framing the dynamic launch zone here. Now this has caused a little bit of confusion and this may change at some point. It's currently October 2019. Here is top of this particular range scale. This is dynamic and the range scale will change depending on our current range. 40 nautical miles in this case, zero miles on that little tick down there. This carrot is showing on that scale how far the hostel is away. Well if that's 40, that's 20 then about 17 or 18 nautical miles away from us. This is a closure rate. This is very important in knots. How fast we are closing on the target. And very importantly, in this case, is minus 50. He's actually going 50 knots faster than we are. He's getting away. And things like that 
closure rates will change massively the range of this missile. Next, yeah, it's a bad example, this one, because we've got three marks that we're interested in. Depending which generation of plane you come from will depend which actual name you call this, but I'm going to call them by their generic names. First of all is R Max Aero, and I'm going to put on the screen at this point the NATOPS, so if you like from the real F-16, and I'm going to put probably down here the DCS description of these different lines. Different people call them different things, but just be aware. So the very top line will be R Max Aero. That is assuming that the hostile does not change course at all, the maximum range at which I can fire the missile and it will hit him. Next is what I'll call the RTR, or in fact, I'm going to call it the range, no escape. That is the range at which we can fire the missile, and even if he maneuvers harshly, it still has a good chance, a 90% chance or so, of hitting him. And then we've got the minimum range at which we can fire. All missiles have a minimum range. They take a certain amount of time to fuse. They're built in, they're designed to do that. You'll see there's only three points at the moment. There's only that point there, excluding that and that, 0 and 40. There's only that point there. And you may struggle to see this, another one there. And that is because just at this particular aspect and set of parameters, our max aero range has merged with our max, our, sorry, our range no escape at the moment, or our RTR. What will happen is as I get closer to this guy, those two ranges will start separating and we'll get a clearer picture. Next, we have some text down here, and you, I explained how the missile works in its slave mode, and we are slaved at the moment. This is telling you that after firing the missile, it will be approximately 22 seconds until the missile goes pitbull, until it goes active, until it severs the data link. So, ideally, if I fire this missile, I do not want to turn away or break radar lock until this counts down to zero. Once it counts down to zero and the missile goes pitbull, this will change to a T and start a new countdown. That will be the time till impact. Note that these numbers are notoriously inaccurate. They only work if the target just keeps on going straight. It does not account very well if the target starts moving and weaving. So you have to take it with a pinch of salt and adjust accordingly. The only other one, and this has caused a lot of, caused a lot of stress and confusion, is this guy here. DCS and the real F-16 seem to disagree what the, this does. In DCS, and we've done some testing with this, this circle here seems to suggest, in fact I'll just read it out from the DCS manual, the radar activation range. And in testing it seems to be the range between the missile and me once fired that the missile will go pitbull. In the NATOPS, if you like, in the real F-16, it's completely different. In the real F-16, if I can find the text, it says something along the lines of that this here is the range at which the missile goes pitbull and it's measuring between the distance between my ship and the hostile ship. So on the real F-16 and the DCS Block 50 have a completely different meaning. I don't really know which is right, so you're going to have to make your own judgment on that. I can only give you what I find. One more thing that we think will come in, sh in future development is a shoot queue. Once we are in this block here, uh, I, it will be range, no escape, down to minimum range. Then we will get a shoot queue, and at the minimum, we will get the little word saying shoot down here. It's something that will come later on, I believe. So, we need to follow this attack through. What I'm going to do is maneuver, so our steering dot is in the ASE circle. Sorry, this has taken so long, but this is a lot of data to absorb if you're new to this. And we're going to watch as the dynamic range scale, sorry, the dynamic launch zone changes. Now, the worst thing that could happen at this point is I lose the lock, and that's a very normal thing to happen. Now, the steering dot's taking me down here, which is weird. I don't know why it's doing that, but trust in the technology, I guess. Taking me all the way down here now. It's currently heading at that kind of angle, like that. Range. Oh, it's still getting... Uh, now, I'm closing on here now. I'm doing this slowly on purpose, just so you know, I can help explain it. We're now closing on him at 90 knots. His aspect is now kind of right to left. I've paused it here. I've paused it here, just uh, got a good chance to look at. I've got the steering dot here, right in the centre of the ASC circle, which is small. This little chevron showing that the hostile aspect is going that way. Uh, probably why we're looking so far this way in terms of lead. And you can see, because he's gone off the screen, which as like I said is normal, then we've got this line pointing towards him. Still no separation between what I call range no escape and uh, our max error. So let's just keep going. He's now heading, flanking completely right to left. If we're going to lose radar lock, which would be normal at this point, because he is effectively notching our radar, it upsets the post stop radar method of working. It'll be now, but we seem okay. I'm going to punch the gas. Closure rate's 300. 
You can see we've changed the rain scale down to 20 now. We're now at about 14 miles. Big closure rate now. Still putting low bucket loads of lead on the thing. 11 seconds now. Strangely, we still haven't had the R Max cursor come out yet. It may not be working in this particular case. It'll be the first time if. But no, you can see it come out now. Lovely. So you see R Max Aero coming out there and separating from our range no escape. It's a perfectly normal thing to happen. I don't understand the physics of it. So we're going to wait until we get to range no escape, which is basically in this block. We want to fire when that there is in this block. That would be perfect. ASC circle is getting big, so the amount of error allowable is much bigger. I, again, I don't really understand the physics of that. I can now fire. Weapon release, the missile is going to fire. You can see it's gone pitbull. It's now 10 seconds till impact. Let's see what he does. Now you'll see that the this number here is really inaccurate and it's almost possibly even given up. I think the missile has missed. And the reason the missile would have missed is simply because he's dodged it. He knew that missile was coming, and so he's dodged it. Let's just check with the missile quickly. Yeah, it, it, it just missed. It missed, simple as that. I know it missed, but that is the way to do it. There was nothing wrong we actually did there other than firing a, a target that was heavily moving heavily right to left. But that leads us next into our next attack, which is gonna be an ACM attack. Uh, it's basically very similar. It's just the way that we get the radar lock or the radar track it's going to be different so we're going to switch to acm mode in this case there are various ways of going to acm mode but i've got a whole video on that so i'm not going to go into it now so crm acm i'm going to go tms up for a bore sight okay i've got a bore sight uh, track i'm initiating now well right, i've got to go find me some targets within 10 miles now you might not be able to see them on your screen but i've got them there right there i could use my helmet mounted queuing system if i wanted that's fine Again, this radar lock. Okay, I'm going to put him in there. No, it's not working. Oh, yes, it is. It's got him. Right. Quickly pause. And just to show, ASE circle, steering dot is there. R max is merged with R no escape again. R minimum is there. We've got four seconds until it goes pitbull. So let's do the shots if we get a bit, a bit of better luck. Close range AMRAMs are crap. They're not close range missiles. So I may miss again, but we'll see. Pull the dot into the ASE circle. We're, we're not within range to fire yet. I'll wait, uh, the, the, generally speaking, the closer we wait to fire, the higher the chances of hitting are, although that tails off when you get really close because you have problems with fusing. So if we get to about three quarters to about half the way down our, our ideal bar, it's going to give us the absolute best chance, generally speaking. Um, there are a lot of things that affect this. So if I find now, he's really going to struggle to beat that. It's right in the middle of the ASE circle. Fox 3. Right, let's hope it works this time. There it goes. All that lead it's got to put to hit the missile. Which one it? was it? It's this one here. Look at him dodge. You see him dodge down there. He's going to miss it. He's going to dodge it. No, he's not. Beautiful. That's that. Okay, next is the bore sight method. This is going to be completely different. So, I'm going to take myself out of ACM. So, the way this is going to work is that in bore sight, I'm just going to prove it to you. I'm going to turn my emissions off. That's our radar turned off. We've got no more radar. I'm going to find a target um, uh, visually and I'm going to put him in this bore sighted ASE circle. You see no radiation there. This bore sighted ASE circle. And I'm not going to get a, a weapons lock. I'm not going to get any kind of lock. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to fire the missile in bore sight mode. And as soon as it leaves the rail, it will turn, it's, it will go pitbull and it will just find the first target it finds in front of it. it could be a friend it could be a hostile so bear that in mind this that's why i say this is really an emergency only only use it if you know there's no hostile in there uh, and you would use it because if for some reason you knew roughly where the hostile is you knew he was in this area but you couldn't actually see him and you couldn't actually get a a, a normal radar lock on that's when you would use this uh, and there are all sorts of times when that would happen okay um uh, all sorts of times when he may be masked by something or you know for some reason you couldn't get a, a conventional radar lock i just need to find these guys visually i'm just going to because i turn my radar off just make sure everything's still okay uh yeah i've still got two medium range missiles selected everything looks okay and i've got no way of ranging these guys with my radar's turned off okay i'm pretty close now i'm just going to put them in my asc circle i'm going to have a shot no idea what's going to happen to be honest off it goes it's going to choose its own target it's going to lead for it look it's found one ha <laughs> ha it's going for him two of them dodged and that and that's the third way of using it in ball side mode just be like i said super careful because it will just go for anything it finds so we've looked at the amram we've talked about how it works in conjunction with our radar we've looked at the two different ways you can select and initialize this we've looked at the ways we can change the settings we've looked at the three different ways that you can fire this missile 
Uh, and that's it. Just be careful with them. Remember, do not fire them if you know a friend is with a hostile in the distance because 50-50 chance whether it kills that hostile or your friend. Hope that was useful and see you later.